Canada has become a prime destination for many Nigerians who are seeking greener pastures in foreign lands. Today on Root Cause, we will examine what makes Canada so attractive to Nigerians who are hoping to resettle outside of this country. And to have this conversation right here in the studio, I have Mr. Kingsley Jesurubu. He is a barrister and solicitor practicing in Ontario, Canada, and he is an immigration lawyer. Welcome to Roots TV. Thank you, Gloria. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. So if you have this stat, if you have the numbers, please could you tell us the number of Nigerians who are living in Canada at this moment? Um, I don't have the exact figure, but I do have the estimate uh, we range from 60,000 to probably 80,000 and uh, more than half or about half of that number is based in uh, Toronto, uh, Canada, where I am based as well. What makes Canada so attractive to Nigerians? I mean, it seems like the number one destination at the moment for Nigerians, professional students and so many kinds of people who are trying to resettle outside of this country. Why Canada? It's interesting that you said that. It's not just Nigerians, by the way, that are flocking to Canada. We have people from different parts of the world, Chinese, Indians, and uh, many others. Just that uh, Canada being the most hospitable country on earth. Uh, this is not me saying that because I live there or because I'm also a Canadian by adoption, but because time after time, the uh, institutions that rank countries according to uh, the livable uh, features and how hospitable they are, how uh, much life expectancy people have and things like that. Mm -hmm. They've ranked Canada as number one, you know, repeatedly. It drops in the ranking sometimes to number two or uh, number three, but it's always hovering. Mm -hmm. It's oscillating between one to two to three. And so uh, naturally, you know, that attracts people. Which is interesting because at this point in time where a lot of countries in the world are so afraid of terrorism, afraid of immigrants coming into their country. Canada is one country that is opening its doors to immigrants. Why is that? Because some may ask, are they having a population problem or they just, they just love having diversity in that country? Canada recognizes the importance of using immigration to address its economic needs. You know, talking about Nigerians, Nigerians uh, bring a lot of skills. I, for one, for example, was trained fully as a lawyer here before I migrated to Canada. So many people, doctors, um, engineers, and the scientists, and what have you, you know, Canada benefits, talking about population, at 30 something million, that's not a whole lot for a country that is second only in terms of landmarks. In terms of landmass, Canada is second only to Russia. Mm -hmm. I have lived in different countries in the world and I've heard about stories. And even in countries that are seemingly so liberal, there is always that trace or that element of racism. Now, I've never really been to Canada before. And talking to you who've lived in Canada, a black man living in Canada, is there such a thing as racism? And of, if it does exist, in what format? Of course, of course. I mean, I'm not going to sit here, bury my head in the sand and say that everything is rosy. There are systemic challenges, systemic problems. The question is to what extent uh, does one subscribe or really submit to these uh, you know, oppressive uh, uh, structures. Mm -hmm. You just have to battle with these things. And for example, being a lawyer, we use the legal instruments at our disposal to fight back and to ensure that uh, we are giving uh, you know, our due. However, I must say that the government, of course, also has a huge role to play in trying to de-emphasize you know, the 
uh, racist tendencies of certain people, certain groups, and what have you. L let's talk about some of the things that make Canada attractive beyond that. People have said, I mean, there are reports that, you know, even as an immigrant, your children have free education, free health care, and all of that. Are those, myths, are those myths or are they real? And how do immigrants, like many Nigerians who flock to Canada, gain access to those kinds of amenities, which are very much missing in this country? Thank you for bringing out of Gloria. You see, um, unfortunately, the myths um, about Canada are so deeply seated in the minds and hearts of folks that they only unfortunately get to realize the true state of affairs once they've taken the plunge, especially those uh, who come there as refugees or those who come to seek asylum. Mm. They are fed with wrong notions of how once you cross the border, everything becomes rosy. It is certainly not. There's nothing like okay, once you're in Canada, you're entitled to free education, the government gives you uh, money and uh, your children are taken care of, you are given accommodation and all of that. To an extent, you know, there's an element of truth uh, to the story that if, for example, you are seeking for protection and you get to Canada, in the first uh, few months or years, you are going to be accommodated and uh, be made to go through the legal route, the processes, you know, you have to have hearings and what have you. But I must warn that if in the end your claim is deemed to uh, be without merit and you fail, you face the prospect of deportation. People are deported, you know, from time to time. And that is when sometimes people begin to realize how um, profound the decisions mm. they made in the first place uh, become. And what I will say is, yes, we have uh, in Canada a lot of uh, structures that make living quite, you know, uh, more... Um, make it easier. More, more, yes, comfortable. Mm -hmm. However, the fact is challenges are still there. For example, even for the skilled immigrants, you find uh, a situation where uh, you are granted permanent residency on account of your skill or skills or skill set, and then you get there, you find that to get a job, you are asked, you know, do you have a Canadian experience? So it takes time to adjust. At a lot of agencies, and sometimes even when you open your email, you have a lot of mails telling you, oh, process your visa, get to Canada, and all of that. How easy is it to relocate to Canada? We talk about it in Nigeria as if just with a, a snap of a finger, you find yourself in Canada, but is it really that simple? And what's the process? Well, thank you very much. You see, thanks for bringing that up. I can't emphasize it enough. The Canadian system, the Canadian government has tried to regulate the practice of immigration law knowing that people take advantage of others who want to immigrate. And I know I've been in, Canada, in Nigeria now for a few, day, few days and I have noticed hearing from people that they are trying to process Canadian visa and they are trying to process all kinds of Canadian related uh, applications. And guess who is helping them? All kinds of people uh, ranging from uh, school teachers to pastors to um, just someone who is a practitioner of law here. You see, under the Canadian Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, which is the law that regulates immigration to Canada, there are two categories of people who are legitimately uh, able to represent others. So people must be careful. The fact that you want to immigrate to Canada does require, if you are using a representative, that you seek out people who are licensed. They are the ones that can guide you properly. Right. It's been wonderful talking to you, Barrister Jesu Rebo. And I hope you enjoy your stay while you're in Nigeria. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> okay, so you have heard all that he has said. The research is yours to be done. Anyways, let's get your comments on the comment section of this video. You've been watching Roots TV Root Cause.